everyone. Welcome to the Zia Wool Studio Buzz podcast. My name is Doug and I am coming to you from Albuquerque in New Mexico in the beautiful desert where it's slowly warming up right now. I, first of all, I wanted to say hello to all the people who are lucky enough to go in, to go to Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. Maybe actually it's going to be over soon already. You guys have already seen all the beautiful things, but I am thinking of Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival and I'm wearing one of my very old shirts from, it doesn't give the name of the year, but it's the 31st festival. That's how it looks like. Yay! Oh, I wish I could be there, but I'm there in spirit. So I, since this is a podcast about knitting and all the fiber arts, I want to talk to you about what I have made in the past two weeks. And first of all, I will show you my beautiful sun showers shawl. It's a shawl, a lace shawl, my first full lace project that I am ever finishing and I am making it with my mother, uh, for my mother. And that's how it looks like. You will not be able to see a whole lot because it's scrunched up on these super tiny needles, which are fine because the yarn is so thin. So that way I don't need to move, move my stitches around too much. And I don't need to be worried about the stitches falling off because I am a tight knitter. I am making this on 3.5 millimeter needles and I have used stitch markers for every single pattern repeat. I am at the end of this so today or tomorrow I will get to start the cast off and currently I have about 800 stitches on the needles. So this ask, as far as I remember, for a Pico cast off, it's going to take me some time. But yeah, so next time, I'm sure you will see this all finished. I am making it with Zia Wool's lace yarn, 100% merino wool. It used to be a blue color, but I over dyed it because I wasn't liking it too much, the first version, and now it's a really great color. Here you can see a little bit of the pattern. Just a simple eyelet, that's how it starts with. Then it changes to this. And <clears throat> at the very end, you really increase every row and you're switching to garter. I am making these increases different than the pattern said because I like the look of this and only if in one round did I do it as the pattern required and that's where you see kind of the break in here. But it doesn't matter to me. I mean, nobody's going to come up and say, well, hey, what did you do there? Because it's consistent in the whole round, whole row. Yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait to see this blocked and all big off of these tiny needles. Sun showers by Boo Knits. Next on the needles is my cumulus. Flowers by Petite Knit. Ooh, sorry about the noise. I showed you last time I had just about split off my sleeves and 
this is where I am right now. Good bit further along in the body. It's only stocking it from now on, so smooth sailing. I worked on this when I had my knit night here with friends, so that was an easy project. And I will just, I think what I will do, because I made some changes and I had talked about this last time. I'm making this instead of the 4.5 millimeters that are giving in, given in the pattern, I chose five millimeters and I also changed the stitch count. I did not want my sleeves too big and I, so they're gonna be slimmer. They're still big enough, can you tell? Yes. So I probably will, after I have finished this one, I have a total of five skeins. This is my second one. So I'm thinking that when I'm done with this, I'm gonna add on one more skein of yarn and then I will switch and finish the sleeve finish the sleeves first I will gradually massively decrease so I don't have them puffy at the end I just wanted a line here and when I'm finished with my sleeves I think then I'm just going to use up all the yarn and on the bottom and go as long as it gets. I think. I don't know. I'll see. This is my yarn. How it looks like in this skein. It's called Scout 100% Wool by Kelborn Woolens. 274 yards in 100 grams. Just check real quick if that's a Oh yeah, just mint heather. That's the colorway. Just keep, that's such an easy project to pick up in between once you're there where you just go straight down. Super easy. And now let's come to the funnest project that I'm the most excited about. Yes. You know how sometimes the creative juices flow and you have this idea that keeps building up in your head and then you need just one little thing that pushes you over the edge and you just have to cast on right then and there and you just do it. It's one of those projects. You have seen the socks that I recently made with the yarn held double for my husband. I really enjoyed that. You know, the way the colors play together. And um, so I, that kept nagging on me. And then I recently saw in a German podcast, a square which was made in that same technique. So this woman makes a blanket where she just knits squares in garter stitch and then she will reassemble her, she will assemble a blanket in the end when she has all her squares done. I don't even know what her stitch count, I don't know her needle size, but that was the thing that pushed me over the edge. I thought, yes, of course, blanket, memory blanket, large squares, thicker, squishy. Best of all, both worlds I will use two yarns. And now in this new blanket, I will be able to use up all the little bits. Uh, because I'm just going to go until I run out of yarns. So I grabbed some needles. I started off with five millimeter needles. I wasn't quite sure. I make my sock memory blanket with just fingering yarn with 
three millimeters. And this one, I knew I was ha gonna have to get up, uh, to go up in needle size. For my husband's socks, I used, I believe, 3.5 millimeters. This one, I started off five millimeters, but I didn't like the fabric that I got with that. I'm a tight knitter, so five millimeters made my fabric too stiff for my taste. I was actually almost, I was close to abandoning the whole project because I didn't like the feel of it. Went up one needle size to 5.5 millimeters and it was like I found the holy grail. I mean, this was just super beautiful. It was a size that I liked. I loved the colors, loved how they sing together, how I, decided I'm going to use one commercial yarn and one hand dyed yarn and I have a lot from friends that I had swapped with in the past years for the for my other sock memory blanket where I'm using just one one yarn so I'm not going to be I'm, I'm I, I have a lot of supplies I'm digging into those in, into those minis and if you are watching and you've swapped with me, thank you again. Your yarn will go into this blanket most likely if it's not already in the other one. And I, because I was so excited about this and because I had already written up the way I wrote, I knitted the fingering yarn sock memory blanket. I had written that up just for friends here. I never published that because there's patterns out. But for this one, I thought, I don't think this has ever been done. I will write this up. I will just change the pattern that I had, adjust the numbers, go over this, polish it, because the, the other one I wrote five years ago and really it needed polishing. I even caught a mistake and so there was some work to be done on that. But I wrote it up as a pattern and now it's out on Ravelry and it is called Song Song Blanket. And, but you want to see how it looks like and this is it. This is not a blanket, I know. I'm just on it. This is a work in progress. But I'm telling you, it is something, once you've started, you do not want to stop because it is so much fun how the colors play together and how they sing together. And thus, this is where the name came from. Initially, I wanted to name it the best of both worlds blanket, but that's a name on Ravelry that's taken. So then I thought song song. Yes, and I have started off with this square, then these two, then this, and last night I made these two. One square measures about seven by seven inches. And then what I love about is, is that I can use up all these teensy weensy bits of yarn. Because my mother, you know, I told you that she knits socks for a good cause in, in, in Germany. And so they, she has lots of little bits because, I mean, of course, they make as much as they can. They make smaller pairs and other sizes to use up as much as they can off the sock yarn. But still, there's always something left over. And here, I just knit until I run out and then I grab the next color. I have woven in already the yarns on four squares but this is what i made last time this is how it looks like a lot of ends but it's no big deal the way i join is i for three stitches i overlap oops i overlap my old yarn which is running out and the new one so for three stitches i have three yarns that I'm working with at the same time. And then when I'm weaving in, I just pull it through 
the pearl bumps for one and a half inches or so or two inches yeah that's a quick one doesn't bother me really you just gotta you just want to make sure you don't want to wait too long for it to build up because when you use all these bits you have a lot of ends yes so exciting and a lot of you love this as much as I am and it's squishy it's soft it's a really fun one and I decided I'm gonna start another knit along which I didn't want to do but of course heck we have to right so there will be the song song blanket knit along and you just can if you are on Instagram please all you need to do is Put the hashtag song song blanket up that's all you need to do and then I'm gonna have this going until the end of August and then I'm gonna do a little giveaway for a set of my minis and yes so excited I am oh yeah I wanted to show you so here for example since I've just finished my Yumi which you have seen. I frogged my little swatch and knitted that up. The other swatch, of course, I had to. And yeah, or I have already used this leftover from a sock blank, which went into this section so much fun can't stop what else yes oh i did want to show you so one more thing about the blanket oh yes two more things about the blanket i have i am making mine with the double centered decrease which essentially what it does is it has your middle stitch laying on top of it on top of this diagonal line but on the back you need to pay attention a little bit and you need to purl that same stitch apparently from what i hear my instructions for how that's done are a little bit unclear but i think that's just in the nature of this weird stitch so if you have trouble with what i wrote or you've never done this i would recommend just go on youtube there's so many if you put in double center decrease you will get a lot of results and i've even seen some are done differently than i am doing mine but that wouldn't matter just as long as it's the double center decrease which creates this beautiful line in the middle. On another note, I just thought I'd show you what I have, what I'm using. I have this little box of little minis hand dyed. <laughs> we have a guest. <laughs> Two guests. <laughs> So that's the hand tied that I have ready and here is what I have gotten from the German commercial sock yarn leftovers. That's of course not that little Yumi. I don't know why that's in here. Oh may oh it's I probably put it in here because it's a commercial sock yarn. I got that one in a swap with a friend. And also when I started the sock, um, this, the sock memory blankets, I also got some yarns from a D-stash, so I will get to use a lot more of these, which we all love. I mean, this is going to be eating some fingering yarn stash, which makes me really happy. So what's next? I have one finished object. I have finished the Pino shrug shoulder thing for my daughter.
This is a pattern that I wrote. It has a beaded cast on <clears throat> edge and a beaded cast off edge. I filmed a little video tutorial on how I did the stretchy bind off for this. And yes, I need to look my own tutorial up to get to that point. It's so embarrassing, but that's the way it is. The Pinot is currently being tested by a few people, but also I need to have a proper photo shoot before I publish this one but I will publish this also as a free pattern so if you can't wait to start maybe you have a skein of my sugarloaf yarn or you say hey Doug I have just bought one of these I have I mean I have two more skeins in my shop right now one is square dance And one is the beekeeper's boyfriend. So feel free to, so these are in the Etsy shop, Zeebel's Etsy shop, just to finish this sentence. But if you have a skein of sugar loaf and you would like to start the shrug before the pattern is published, no problem at all. Just shoot me an email, zeobles at comcast.net, and I am happily sending you the pattern. It looks like there are no mistakes because one of my testers finished hers, loved it, and said she didn't have any problems. Um, it is a pattern which I wrote only in one size. So if you feel like, hey, I'm my shoulders are narrower or broader it's easy to modify because you will just add a pattern add to or take away two pattern repeats one pattern repeat has eight stitches so subtract 16 or add 16 to my stitch count I believe in the last video I said that you should get beads size 8. I think I said it right and then I put on the screen that it's, I think I said 6 and then I put on the screen that it's 8. But if you know your beads, you know that the smaller the number, the larger the bead. And so we want the larger bead so we can get through the bead with a tiny crochet hook and also pull through our loop of yarn. So the required size of beads is size six. Six. Six it is. Please feel free to shoot me an email if you want to make this right away and you can't wait and you want to cast on. And you have everything and I the reason why I say my sugarloaf yarn is you will need about 470 to 480 yards I have designed it specifically for this yarn or with this yarn in mind and um, since I'm a tight knitter if you're a looser knitter you might even need a little bit more yarn the Pinot is worked with five millimeter needles. And yes, I have made one for myself in a hot pink, in a very bright orange. And of course, you know me, I wear a lot of turquoise. I love my turquoise, I love my greens. So I have already lined up the next Pinot for myself and I already got my beads. I, it's kind of, this skein has a funny story because I've had this for myself for a long time. It's 
I had dyed a, I had put aside a, and I think I even started knitting a shawl with a light green and a gray and a light blue, turquoise-ish light blue. But at the same time, I started dyeing speckled yarns and started working with speckled yarns. And man, there is no turning back once you start working with speckled, if you love that, because it keeps your attention at all times. It's just so much more fun than solid yarns. So what I did was I frogged the beginning of that shawl I rewound my yarns into skein and speckled them. All of them. <laughs> so that was the Pinot shawl. I'm looking around, making sure I'm not forgetting anything. I have also recently done some spinning and I had told you about it. I wanted to try A new to me uh, base that I will add I mean a uh, spinning fiber which I would like to add to the shop so of course I wanted to spin it myself I had dyed a small sample and I spun it and I really I have to say I really like it it's long fibers it's easy to spin not too slippery especially I'm thinking if you're more of a beginner knitter you may want longer fibers where you don't always need to worry about breaking about your yarn breaking and that's one of those yarns one of those fibers and this is what i got i finished that little skein in the meantime and what i have is 43 grams and 94 yards 100 percent choreodil but that was not all because, oh my goodness, this was the two weeks of ultimate joy because, you know, I've talked about the hap and I mean the black baby blanket that I made, the, the, which is a hap. And I have told you that I so much would have loved to have a hap stretcher because the beauty of, and look that up, look up a hap stretcher. There's these pictures of where these women, I think it's on the Shetlands, they have in front of these old stone houses, they have all kinds of haps standing in the stretchers because, I mean, they couldn't lay it out flat. They just made this as a for uh, did this for a living I assume and so they had to they couldn't mess around with having the stuff the haps drying for days I bet it was cold there it is cold there a lot and not as like our dry heat here stuff dries quickly but that's why they just needed something like this where you can dry your hap upright my dream was to have a half stretcher. Of course, I'm not a woodworker, neither is anybody in my family. My dad's gone. Well, he probably would have made me one, but that's, I mean, it, it, I just didn't know what to do about it. So I thought, well, whatever, I can't help it. I have no choice. I did then remember that a friend of mine is a woodworker. I asked him, would you make this for me? I sent him the instructions. He checked them out. He said, oh, he gave me a price. And I said, well, it's just, I wish, I wish, I wish, but I can't, I just can't afford it right now. I was really bummed and I said, well, maybe next year. Two weeks later, I get a text message from my friend. He says, oh, are you at home? I need to ask you a question. I said, oh, sure. I was doing things in the studio. Um, he comes with his wife, who is a extremely talented fiber artist too, by the way. And oh, my heart, I cried. 
he made me a half stretcher and gifted it to me. What can I say? I mean, this is just the generosity and love in that gesture. I don't even find words. Yeah. I was very, very touched. Very touched. I will, of course, eventually show you the half stretcher when I have a new half on it, which brings me to the next project that I'm working on. And that is that I am on a new spin for another half. Here it is. This is my second bobbin. What I am using is this. I showed you this a while ago for because I had initially planned to make a sweater. I dyed quite quite a bit of fiber for the sweater and I feel like I've spun some of it also, but I can't find it. Don't know what happened. Maybe I'm wrong. It's been a while. This is Rambouillet fiber from which was picked up by me from a sheep farm in New Mexico. And then I had sent it out to Zeilingers in Michigan who processed that for me. So I have a lot of that Rambouillet um, here. And if you are interested to try that, it is undyed in my shop on Etsy. If you don't dye yourself, but you are a spinner and you want to try it, if you order yarn from me, you can always say, Hey, Doug, can you add a little sample for me of that Rambouillet? I'll be happy to send that something like this. Uh, it is a very, it's a fiber with a lot of crimp and you can even feel that in the braid. It has a lot of bounciness still and the yarn turns out the same way. I have spun quite a bit of it. For this, I decided I'm, I want to blend the blue and the natural white a little bit more. So I chased most of it already through my drum carter where it looks like this. Just a light blue. I know my second bat turned out, I mean, both my bat did not weigh anything and both my bats turned out ever so slightly different in color, but I don't mind. I kind of switched it up, but the way I spin this is I split a strip away from it and I just spin that long draw and I feel so fancy. I made myself a control card. Did a little bit of a plied sample and also the variation on the singles yarn. So here's the plan. I want this and I just hope it's going to be enough. I'm going to have, I have no idea. I haven't waited, like I said. So uh, I'm thinking this is going to be on the inside of the half. And then for the border and the applied lace, I'm going to use either Definitely some kind of hand spun, either what my friend Sherry sh sent me, which I showed you in the last podcast. Either I'm going to use that if I like how it, if I like the harmony, or I also have one more braid, which is now it's a braid still, which is, and I didn't bring that. I'm sorry, I'll show you another time, which is actually, I should show you. Hold on one second. 
So here is the other braid, which I'm thinking that might work. Wait a second. Is it or is it not? It's a totally different blue. What am I even saying? I have no idea. I will see. So that might be an option. I thought it was more more related to this color. So I'll see what happens with this when I get there. I'll, first of all, I will spin all of this. I have one bobbin filled, kind of. I try to visually split up the bat, but I still have to card this, of course. And then, and then I'll see what I'll do. So more has happened in regards to spinning. I told you that I met up with my friend uh, Jeannie who's here in Albuquerque and who joined me to skirt some fleeces that were gifted to me uh, by a, a local um, young man who breeds sheepdogs. That's why he needs sheep to train them. And so we skirted those fleeces that I had received and uh, I, of course, I had to start washing and carding. I had already started, I told you that, and I had not carding, I combed, started combing that. That's what I'm doing. And I did not bring everything in because I have a bowl out in the studio. That's what I do in between when I dye yarn. I, when it has to set, when the dye's set and I have time, I comb rambly fibers. And I then I, I do that on my combs, which I showed you last time, and then I diz it off. I am, as you can see, not the best at dizzing yet, but I don't care. It is going to be so beautiful. Check out these clouds. Oh, wow. They're so light. This barely weighs anything, what I have. But there's more, like I said, out in the studio. I'm going to keep carding and uh, until I have a decent amount because I want, I, I, I prefer to have a larger skein of yarn versus many short ones just because just because I can't wait to spin it. But of course I had to spin a little sample skein, which you have no idea how happy this little skein makes me. And I will probably just grab any lace pattern and knit up a teensy weensy bit of just any yarn overs and two togethers to see how it looks like. So pretty. Look at that. And it's so squishy and bouncy. So the one person that I watch a lot to learn about combing and processing fleece and spinning thin, which I, well, spinning, I can spin thin, so that's nothing that I need to learn. But it, her name is, I believe, The Natural Spinner. She, if I remember that correctly, I believe that she spins lace yarn singles. So that's going to be one thing which I would like to try before I start knitting with this. I think I'm going to spin some lace singles and then I will knit with both of these at the same time. I mean, of course not at the same time. You know what I mean. Try one and then right away try with the other. So happy. So squishy. You have no idea. <laughs> I wish I could let you feel this. 
Well, I am looking around and I have come to the end of this. In case you wonder what became of the baby projects, I have not continued on that little cardigan that you liked very much, I believe, as much as I do the one with the seed stitch collar. I still haven't looked up the proper buttonholes. And also my wannabe hat, that's almost my size. I did not, I did, I, all I did was frog that. Actually, I did a little bit more. So here's the deal with that one. The rainbow colored sport weight yarn. That's what I want to do. And I will show you when it's actually a work in progress next time. The plan is, the plan was to make a little sleeveless vest, something to keep the body warm. But what was I thinking? As soon as I get to here, my beautiful rainbow pattern is going to be broken up because what am I going to, how am I going to do that? What was I thinking? Because then I split up and I got to finish front and back separately. So that's not going to work out. So there are two options and I tend towards, well, I can make a buttoned vest or I can make a top-down sleeveless raglan best and that's what I decided I'm going to do. I cast on already but realized that I uh, made a mistake. I'm missing a stitch so I will have to start start over and I will do that shortly so that I think that next time I will have a little bit to show on that one. In the meantime, Thank you all for watching. I'm glad you spent some time with me again. Thank you already to all of you who always kindly send, uh, leave me a comment. Thank you if you plan to do that. Thank you if you wanna join in the knit along. And I hope you're gonna have a good next two weeks. And until I see you again in about two weeks, I wish you happy knitting.